Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Gene Curl. If you are new here, uh, I make videos about religion, fountain pens and journaling, and occasional videos that are just about my life. So uh, today's video is about why I'm not a Christian. I have considered myself a Christian for most of my life, but no longer. And this video is about why I don't consider myself a Christian any longer. I want to make it clear that I am not at this point in my life because of any abuse or offense I suffered at church, or because I didn't try. I've had doubts for much of my life, and I spent much of my life in doing everything within my power to believe. I truly want to believe in Christianity, but I can't believe in something just because I want to believe in it. I am also not an atheist just so that I can sin and live my life, and I live my life in much the same way I did when I was in church. First off, I want to make it clear what I mean by Christian so everyone knows what I mean when I say that I am not a Christian. When I say Christian, I don't mean some nebulous concept of Jesus. I don't mean that he was a good teacher or even he, that he was a prophet. When I say Christian, I mean what was traditionally thought of as a Christian, and that is a person who believes that Jesus was literally God in the flesh and that only through Jesus can he or she gain salvation and eternal life. To be a Christian, there are a handful of non-negotiable things a person absolutely must believe. To be a Christian, a person must believe in an all-powerful, all-knowing God who created everything and that there is nothing greater than God. A person must believe that humans are a fallen and sinful species and that only through the divine action of God can we have any worth or hope of redemption. They must believe that there is life after death. They must believe that Jesus was and is the Christ and literally God in the flesh who came down to save us from our sins by dying on the cross and raising from the grave three days later. In order to be a Christian, a person must also believe that it is only through faith in Jesus and by his mercy and grace that we are saved. With all that out of the way, I will now talk about why I am not a Christian. I spent countless hours and went into great depth on these issues before I came to the place where I am now. But this video is just a brief overview of why I am not a Christian, and I will not go into depth on any of these issues, though I plan on going into depth on the issues in later videos. One of the simplest reasons I am not a Christian is that there is no evidence for God, and certainly not a loving God. I am certainly far from the first person to be bothered by the concept of theodicy, but I simply can't look at the state of the world and conclude that there is an all-powerful, all-loving God in control of it all. All available evidence strongly suggests either there is no God or there is a God who doesn't care what happens on the earth. The Greek philosopher Epicurus, who lived between 341 and 270 BC, was troubled with the problem of evil and said, Is God willing to prevent evil but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? I have never heard a good response to the charge of Epicurus, though many have tried. And the last time I asked a pastor about this, he said he would get back to me, and then he never did. The best answer most people can come up with is that God doesn't want to take away our free will. But I'm not an all-wise God, and I know how I could end most of this suffering without taking away anyone's free will. Besides, the free will argument only applies to human actions and not to diseases or natural disasters. According to the World Health Organization, none of the top ten causes of death are human-caused and are mostly diseases. Don't tell me that eliminating diseases would take away anyone's free will. Some people claim that God is evident, but he is not. An invisible deity who takes no active role in the affairs on earth is no different than no deity at all. Also, the God of the Bible is neither kind nor just, and is a horrible father. No parent who treated his or her children like the God of the Bible treats his could be considered a good parent. God even created some people to go to heaven and others to go to hell, according to Romans 9. And in fact, it says even before they were born and before they did anything, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. Christopher Hitchens said, Once we assume a creator and a plan, it makes humans objects of a cruel experiment whereby we are created to be sick and commanded to be well. Some people will use the first cause argument to prove God, but if everything needs a first cause, the first cause argument states that everything needs, everything has a cause. 
and therefore there had to be some first cause. But the problem with that is, is that everything, if everything needs a cause, then the first cause would also need a cause. And therefore, if, if God needs, if uh, everything needs a cause, then God would also need a cause. And if God doesn't need a cause, then we can conclude that the universe didn't need a cause either. I'm not a Christian because there is no evidence that Jesus ever existed in the first place. Outside of the Bible, the only references to Jesus are spurious at best, and some of them are known forgeries added later. I can't believe that the most important person to ever live on the earth never had anything written about him by anyone other than his followers. In fact, the entirety of the Gospels is secondhand and not written by anyone who actually saw Jesus. The Gospels were written by anonymous authors at least 60 years after the death of Jesus and were certainly not written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Since we can't even be sure that Jesus existed, his resurrection is certainly not evident. And in fact, Paul is the only person to write about having seen Jesus when it actually happened instead of years later. But Paul didn't actually see Jesus. He saw a bright light that his companions didn't see, and he heard a voice that his companions didn't hear. The only thing Acts says that Paul's companions heard was a noise. I know the Bible talks about hundreds of people who saw Jesus ascend to heaven, but we don't have the account of any of those people. We have the word of the Bible claiming that those hundreds of people saw Jesus ascend, and that's not the same thing. Outside of the Bible, there is neither proof for the life nor the resurrection of Jesus. While we're on the subject of the Bible, I don't know who wrote the first five books of the Bible, but it certainly wasn't Moses, and serious Bible scholars agree that it wasn't written by a single author, and certainly not Moses, especially since the death of Moses is written about in the, in the fifth book of Moses. I don't want to take time to go into a lot of specifics, but there are a lot of contradictions in the Bible, such as no one being able to see the face of God and live, yet Abraham wrestled with God all night. If the Bible were inherent, there would be no contradictions and no errors. But instead, we have a book with many errors and many contradictions. Jesus is often considered to be the most wise teacher to ever live, but he wasn't all that wise, as he certainly thought his second coming would be during the life of his disciples. And it has been over 2,000 years and he hasn't come back. Jesus also didn't preach anything that would change the world, such as preaching against racism, sexism, or even against slavery. Think of all the lives Jesus could have saved had he just told people to wash their hands. Jesus didn't even need to tell them about the germ theory. Just telling the people to wash their hands would have been enough. God is unnecessary. The material world has enough evidence for how things came to be that it makes the existence of God unnecessary. Science hasn't found all the answers yet, but is well on its way to doing so. But evolution beautifully explains the vast diversity of life on Earth, and can even explain complex human morals. One doctor even said nothing in medicine makes sense except in light of evolution. Unlike God, evolution has an overwhelming and astounding amount of evidence for it. Speaking of evidence, there is not one shred of actual evidence that the Exodus story ever happened. When I first heard a college professor say that there was no evidence of the Exodus story, I thought she was lying. But upon doing research on my own to prove her wrong, I realized that she was right, which greatly surprised me as I had always been taught while growing up that there was a lot of evidence for the Exodus story. The entire concept for the story of Jesus bothers me too, because I don't see any good reason why God couldn't just forgive us without requiring human sacrifice. A pastor friend of mine says that it is like if he let me borrow his car and I crashed it. He could forgive me and not make me pay, but some of us still have to pay for the damage. But that analogy falls short because God created and owns everything. Therefore, he would, it would be like God would be taking money out of his own account to pay himself back. In that scenario, I don't see why God couldn't just forgive us since he made everything, he owns everything, and he made the rules. If, God ha if somebody has to pay for the damage, but God owns everything, there's no way we could actually pay for, for it. And if he's paying for it himself, I don't see the point of him taking money out of his account just to put it back in his account. Uh, I don't see why God couldn't just forgive us without requiring human sacrifice. I have a fundamental issue with worship since it requires us to think that we are less than worthless. But that is the operating principle of religion. 
If we are not worthless, then we don't need a savior. Religion, all religion, seeks to make us feel completely worthless, so we need a religion. Therefore, we only feel a value when we are a part of the religion and adhering to its rules and doctrines. I also have an issue with prayer, because it doesn't work. Praying to God has about the same success rate as praying to a telephone pole. Prayer is set up to be a no-loss scenario for God. If we pray and get what we ask for, God answered our prayer. Praise God. If we didn't get what we prayed for, God has a better plan for us. Praise God. Prayer is meant to glorify God regardless of the outcome of prayer. But in all my years of praying, I can't honestly say that I have ever had any prayer answered because the only things I ever got that I prayed for were things that I could make happen on my own power, and anything that would require divine assistance went unanswered. People say, every prayer is heard and every sincere prayer is answered, but my sincere prayers as a child to not go hungry or to not be beaten fell on deaf ears and were not answered. Since there is no real evidence for any of the claims of religion, we have to take it on faith. But the problem with faith is, it's a belief in something for which there is a lack of evidence, and in some cases, it is a belief in things for which there is evidence against. Some people say that I have faith the sun will rise, but I don't have faith the sun will rise, I have evidence. These are not all of my issues with Christianity, but these are some of my major concerns. When I started asking questions, I did not set out to become an atheist, I just wanted the truth, and I knew the truth could not be harmed by evidence. Uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you got something out of this. If so, please click the like button, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it when I post new videos in the future. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.